Hi class, Ms. Sterley here. This is Unit D, Part 2, and in this screencast we're going to talk about DNA replication, how DNA makes an exact copy of its entire self uh, to allow a cell to divide and have the exact same genetic material inside of it. And this is how you began as one cell and divided into the trillions of cells that you are today. So in this screencast, uh, we are going to talk about what DNA does, the, the actual steps that DNA undergoes to make a copy of an ins, its entire self, which is what allows you and all life to continue. So, uh, just like your grandma, and I had a grandma gang who gave me many of her recipes. And uh, over time, the recipes get old and worn out, but I have copied them all and I have the exact library of all of gang's recipes. So, just an analogy uh, in terms of passing on information from one generation to the next. You want the exact, I want her exact recipe. So I need an exact copy. So some vocabulary words, enzymes. We've been talking about enzymes. We remind ourselves enzymes are proteins. Uh, and in this case, the enzymes, any chemical reaction happening in the body is going to have a specific enzyme. Complementary, again, we have been talking about DNA structure and that the rungs, if we remember, are made up of the complementary bases. A is complementary base paired with two hydrogen bonds to T and C is complementary base paired with three hydrogen bonds to G. Unzipping is going to be what happens between the two bases. So if we still have that image uh, of the ladder, imagine taking a saw and cutting that ladder in two halves. The sugar phosphate backbone, again, if we remember, we have two backbones on the outside of our two strands of DNA, and we need to understand that cells, to continue, must divide, and to divide, the DNA must replicate before division occurs. So, as we were just saying, DNA needs to replicate for the content continuity of life. So when you began as one cell, that one cell contained all the genetic information to make to build you. Your blue eyes, your blonde hair, your freckles, your dimples, all your characteristics were in, encoded in that DNA. However, uh, that DNA had to be the exact same. Each cell that became you need to have the exact copy, the same library uh, that the first cell had. So DNA replication is the process that is going to allow for this. So cells divide. They grow to a maximum size and then they split into two cells that have the identical, hopefully, DNA. And we should remember, right, this is cell division of this sort is called, referred to as mitosis. So this is how our cells repair uh, if we we're right out in the park skateboarding and we fell and ripped off some skin that cell that hopefully the skin would be able to regrow there how does it regrow cell division those skin cells have the ability to grow and divide and make new cells so the overview of this process uh, if we have a big idea First, sometimes it's easier to put the little details in second so we're going to start with the parent, the original DNA, remember the rungs in the middle, the backbone, sugar phosphate backbone running on the outside, the strands are anti-parallel. To make a new copy, the two DNA strands will unzip, open up. So in this first step, we're going to break the H bonds that kept those bases together. In the second step then, we're going to add these new nucleotides in a complementary base pair fashion. So always following that complementary base pair rule. So here we have an exposed G base, so obviously we're going to add on a C nucleotide and so on and so forth. So at the end of all this, we see the dark blue is the parental strand, what we started with over here, and the light blue is these new strands that were added in a complementary base pairing fashion. So 
important to understand, because next unit we're going to talk about transcription, when we're talking about DNA replication, the entire sequence, everything, all your chromosomes, all of the chromatin, all the DNA is copied in entirety. It's not one portion, a gene, like when we're talking about protein synthesis. So the steps, uh, some people like knowing things in numbered order. So there's three steps. First step is unzipping the hydrogen bonds. Remember that ladder image, if we were to take the ladder and saw it in half, the H bonds are being broken by an enzyme, enzyme by the name of helicase. So right here, right, this is the unzipping right here. And there's our zipper, same as a zipper, right? We, un we open it up leaving these little teeth exposed. Same idea with DNA, we leave these bases exposed. So the second step, we add new nucleotides following always the complementary base pair, unless of course there's, there's a mutation, right, a mistake. But generally speaking, we're adding new nucleotides following the base pairing rule. Another enzyme is going to help out here, a big enzyme polymerase, and we're adding to the exposed strand. So right in here, there's the parent strand, this new nucleotide, so that C, we'd be adding a G in here, and there's T, we're adding an A, and a G, we would be adding a C. So we're adding new nucleotides, so nucleotides that are already available within the nucleus. The last step is adjoining together uh, the backbone, and this is an enzyme called ligase. So we're going to form this backbone. So it's making a bond between the adjacent nucleotides, between the sugar and the phosphate of the side-by-side -side nucleotides. So if we're just watching on this little um, animation, this would be the parental strand, and we're looking at one strand being copied, right? We can see one nucleotide's been added, and now this new nucleotide is going to come on in here. Come on, little nucleotide. Is it going to run, or is it paused? So this one would, if it would work, move in here, make an H bond, and then here we're going to make a bond between the sugar, this sugar, and this phosphate, and then this one will bond to the next one, and so on and so forth. And then another nucleotide would come in here, okay? So DNA is semi-conservative. That means we started with the parental strand, so the latter, we can see it nicely here. We sawed it in half with an enzyme. We broke the H bonds, and we have the red. Now we added the blue strands on to the parental strands, the daughter strand. So when we have these two new identical strands of DNA, each new strand is half parent, half daughter, half new. So this is semi for half, conservative for the old is conserved. So this is the two new strands that are the result of semi-conservative DNA replication. In our next screencast, the last one of this unit, we're going to be talking about recombinant DNA, how we add DNA from one species into the DNA of another species to make a transgenic organism. Hopefully, at the end of this screencast, you can recognize the steps of DNA replication uh, and recognize DNA replication itself outline the steps, and then recognize in picture format uh, the specific steps of DNA replication.